Hello. Hey. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome back. We've been uh, away for a while, but w here we are again, ready to talk about The Link Between Worlds. The game was released last month, and we all played it. We loved it. I'm here with Frank. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and with Martin. Yeah, hello. So, there have been a lot of reviews and also podcasts about the game and about uh, the content, so what we want to do here is go more in-depth, uh, take some of the features and see what it what it does to the players and what it means for the series. And it um, should be interesting. To start off, how many times did you play it? Frank, I know you played it like two or three times. Yeah, two full playthroughs, one through normal mode, one through hero mode, and then I like started two halfway playthroughs just for fun and check some things for guides, you know. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I've just played it one time and I have started my hero mode save file. Same with me. I think I beat the game and then two days later I just wanted to try hero mode. First time in a Zelda game that I wanted to play it right away. Second time. Yeah, it does I, uh, create repair value, yeah. Yeah. Frank. Yep. We discussed the uh, energy gouge or meter, right? Yeah. One of the bigger changes. What do you think of it? I, I really like it. Uh, usually I'm a guy who saves ammo and like mm. uh, arrows and bombs and magic. I usually hesitate to use these things. Damn, because you, you, you never know. Damn. Maybe you, you need it. It's stupid because usually you find pots with the stuff in it, but I'm... Yeah. Uh, yeah, resistant to use these things. But with the energy meter, you're always like, okay, I really want to use the bow and the fire rod and everything. Infinite amount of arrows, yeah? And on the same time, yeah. it prevents you from spamming the items, which is also really crazy. So you have, uh, in the fights, you have to be more tactical. If yeah. there's the decisions, you have, you have to uh, mix in the sword. And yeah. Yeah. I also it, love it. I really, really like it. I think it has a lot of great potential for the series. Yeah, I had a lot of uh, a lot more fun with the items just because I got to use them a lot more. I didn't have to worry about saving That's them good. for the last boss or whatever. Yeah, same for me. I'm I'm like you, Frank. I gotta save those bombs and arrows. So now we have infinite, except for the energy meter going down, and it works out great. And the items are so much fun to use on this game. Yeah. Well, I, I really love the items. It's so mm. much variety. You're actually, you're actually using more items than you're just using your shield yeah. and sword. And that's really yeah. been one of my bigger complaints about the games. And now you're basically using everything. I, I see people posting combination of the tornado rod and fire rod for yeah. stun for and damage. Mm. Yeah, for the treacherous tower, this is a mini game. It's really awesome, this combination. Actually, did you use your shield a lot? Because I didn't. No. In the later battles, like the, the final battle, I think I used the shield a lot. And for the shadow battles, mm. like when you fight Dark Links, uh, Shadow Links, I mean. Yeah. But yeah. the other time, no, no, not so much. I might use it more in the hero mode then. Yeah, you have to definitely, yeah. because it takes lots, four I times the damage. I think, time. in general, the shield is better suited for 3D Zeldas. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we already talked about replay value. Uh, Martin, what did you think of it? Well, it's great. I'm loving my second playthrough, even though I'm going to put it down for some time to play some other games. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's fun as hell. I had uh, fun every second I played it the first time, and I um, I want to play it again and do another combination of items. As Frank says, um, you can use <laughs> a lot of items. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing. Uh, when did you guys uh, get the uh, Pegasus boots? Well, in the beginning, because I luckily didn't miss that one guy hmm. but if I had and just bought the thing then I would have missed them the whole game I think when I first played the game I uh, on an event in a press event where I like, played it for three hours I couldn't <laughs> find them because I, I thought you had to use the Pegasus boots to hunt down the yeah. guy it's a, it's a nice puzzle because it goes you against your intuition of your SSL often because you expect certain things to happen if, uh, and like it's, it's done and linked to the past and here it's like the complete opposite and it's cool puzzle but uh, my, my first playthrough I figured it out because there's a girl that gives you a hint I think yeah uh, yeah well, or a boy uh, one character gives you uh, a hint it's a boy yeah but he gives the best hint if you talk to him a second time I never did that until I did it by accident and then I thought oh he has the boots, really? <laughs> and at that moment, I just had to finish the last dungeon. So 
I went the whole game without them, and I was I was always thinking, hmm, they could have done something with the L button. That's really a shame. <laughs> 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 but um, Ed, that's what's so great about this game. You have so many items that you can just skip. And yeah. But I think the bigger aspect of the repair value is uh, dungeon order, that you can basically play everything out of order, and you have so many possibilities in how you... Yeah. And lots of exploration. Yeah. I, I, I calculated the fact like uh, over 5,000 different uh, combinations mm. of the dungeons. It's crazy. So everyone can basically find uh, his own way through a link between worlds. You know, uh, yeah. the way. It's really cool. And it even opens the way to challenges. Like there's uh, certain areas in the game are open to you, but are pretty difficult, like Death mm. Mountain with a, uh, with a line of those lion mount monsters with um, fire breath. Especially so hero modes. They are pretty, yeah, they are pretty dangerous, but you can still go there and explore and maybe even play the ice ruins as the first dungeon if you want a challenge. And yeah. that's that's really cool. Yeah. What I did, I uh, went onto Death Mountain to get the bottle. The bottle? Yeah. yeah, because it really helps in uh, in the game later. Well, anyways, um, the non-linear, as you guys say, is that maybe I'm I'm gonna go through this hero mode with the blue mail first. But I'll yeah, probably play it again as, yeah. as as a third time, where I'll skip the blue mail and do mm. another dungeon first, just to make it that more tougher and also yeah. play with yep. three hearts. So yeah. It tries the ice runes first because I think they're the like the diff most difficult dungeon. Also but, my favorite uh, dungeon, by the way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the 3D effect is yeah, awesome. Yeah, I love this dungeon. It's yeah. Like, it's like when you go one level down or up, yeah. it's seamless, you don't have to it's, it's load really, it. And it's really maze-like, I like this maze-like dungeon yeah. design where you can uh, get lost and have to figure your way out. It's, it's, but yes. I think a lot of I the dungeons this. here were pretty maze-like and non-linear. Uh, some of them are more simple. And there isn't some linear dungeons like a Tower of Hera. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's alright, you have a good uh, mix of between different uh, Martin, types of dungeons. you didn't really get lost in dungeons you told us, right? No, I kind of really got through them really fast. I played a link <laughs> to the past lately, and I yeah. don't know if that has anything to say, but but no, I, I, either I've been lucky or my Zelda Instinct have just been at the expert level this time. Yeah, Usually maybe. I do have problems in the dungeons, but in this game, no, I, I didn't really find it difficult. Hmm. Well, I personally thought the dungeons could have been harder with the enemies. That's yeah. uh, the, my, my main complaint about the dungeons. Like, well, the, I think that yeah, I the agree. dungeons is since you have the rental system, you have every item. Um, when you have to rent them, that the dungeons are just me yeah. Don't know, but I mean, in general, every dungeon, not just because of really like every dungeon could have used stronger enemies. Now, mm -hmm. Star Wars are treated like a mini boss, which is a joke. Like. This happens actually in most dungeons, but uh, normal enemies from A Link to the Past are treated like uh, as a mini-boss, which is... Yeah, well, boring. it's more like suddenly uh, they lock the door and yeah, yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be scary, well, it's really not. Yeah, but yeah. it's like a mini-boss, I don't think it's too good. No, well, the game could have been a bit harder. Actually, I was hoping that hero mode would change first, that hero mode uh, adds more enemies to the dungeons, but it didn't, no. sadly. It's just harder. Yeah. Ah, well. So, Hopefully. what they made a big deal of is uh, how the music is not really orchestrated, but it's made to sound orchestrated. What did, you, what did you think of the music? I love the music of this game. Uh, who's the guy who made it? Ryo Nagatsu? What's, what's his name? Yeah, I yeah don't know. Ryo Nagamatsu is his name. And he did an awesome job with the music. I love the mix between the new songs and, and remix of old, mm. old songs. Yeah, great soundtrack. Martin? Yeah, I agree. Again, I don't oh, remember yeah. music so good, so I have to download the tracks sometime and listen oh, you to should. it again. But the overworld tracks I remember very clearly, and um, I love the music. It's great. I, uh, it's always great in Zelda games. I have several favorites, but one I like is the one from the Kako mini game. Uh, me, no, no, I hate this song. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop this. Well, that's, can't, that's yeah, because yeah. you're playing it all the time. Yeah, I'm playing it too much. I can't listen to this song anymore. <laughs> Actually, I'm, but yeah. at the beginning it was good, yeah. But yeah, it's it's a good song. But uh, if you play this game for hours and hours and yeah. hours because you want to beat it, then <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that was really. Uh, I think the song was kind of. Um, the reason that I got hooked on the Cuckoo game in the beginning and it was kind of my profit to get <laughs> some it's, items to it start sounds with. like an Irish pub song yeah, or maybe yeah. something that comes from The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings. Yep. I really like it. But yeah. the game itself, the, the mini game, aye aye aye. 
<laughs> Good luck. Uh, about the music, as like uh, uh, the dungeons in Laurel all have the same uh, melody theme, but all, they are all different in a special way. I really enjoyed yeah. the. It's, it's yeah, cool. But I think that the theme is actually uh, the from the first Zelda game, the, the dungeon music. This is uh, basically a remix of this. It's the main dungeon theme in the Link Between Worlds, but like each dungeon does it differently. Like. Yeah, but I started paying attention, and you really have to listen closely because each yeah. song sounds so differently. And then yeah. sometimes you'll hear the like the main dungeon theme through it, something like that. But it's and cool. It's, I think yeah. I like this as the way he did the dungeon songs. I agree. Really yeah. clever. So. Anything bad about the game? We already talked a bit about the Coco mini game. Yeah. Frank, you want to throw out some more frustration? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've thrown out enough frustration in the last weeks. For people who don't know, there's like a, a reward for staying alive in the mini game for 999.99 seconds, which is about 70 minutes. And the game gets harder every 100 seconds like it gets really crazy after 500 seconds so it's it's near impossible to beat you earlier and there's a reward for you can un unlock a oh spoiler spoiler uh okay but if you want to see the best ending you have to do this and i'm like a big completionist when it's come to Zelda. i've completed all Zelda games for a hundred percent yeah did, did the craziest stuff before like collecting all 64 rings or even the 999 hits in spirit tracks with the sword minigame were not as one not as crazy as this. So it, it is a little bit too much. Uh, we even said in the Ibata Ask interview that the challenge that only like a few people worldwide can do. Mm. Like the whole development team wasn't able to beat this game. So yeah. We overdid well, it. <laughs> but somebody already did it and uh, Yeah, crazy. I've seen about three people who yeah. can beat it. Wow. But, uh, that's Crazy. not uh, that's not a lot uh, on on the internet. <laughs> no, it really is not. What I personally uh, missed was the story. I'm, I I know that a lot of people disagree with me because uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Es especially in the last five years, people seem to uh, not care that much about story and even maybe dislike a game that has too much story. Yeah. Especially Skyward Sword and ugh. yeah, which is weird by Spirit the way. Spirit was so awful. Uh, ten years ago, people were complaining that Zelda didn't have enough story and that Miyamoto was crazy for not caring about story. And now it's like the other way around. Yeah, you can never please people. No, I think you have to find the right balance between. Mm. Uh, a good way to tell the story, but some I don't want to have cutscenes. I don't want to run from one cutscene to the next, which is straight and link between worlds because you don't. It's more like. You have some cutscenes at important points, and which is which Trish. is great, and so this is more like exploring and talk to people. And but there could have been some more point. story in those cutscenes because the cutscenes are there's not so much material in them, if you ask me. No. Anyway, I, I think the story they could have put a little bit more into it, just optional story maybe. Like if you could talk to some characters, they would have more things to say. Yeah, maybe maybe more character interaction, more to explore with the yeah. characters. For yeah, for example, okay. Ravio in the second half he doesn't really add anything new. No, he's just laying on the floor. Like yeah, if you buy all items, he gets boring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I try to steal his rupees, but he gets so mad every time I try. <laughs> yeah, I heard there's a hack, and you can actually steal his rupees, and it'll give you a special ending. Hey. Yeah. But. Uh, I probably I, just. I think that doesn't know. <laughs> I probably Somebody's made it up. So. Throw you, Stefan. <laughs> you have a Trojan in your 3DS. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Anyways, guys, is there anything else you miss in this game? Boss battle mode. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I think uh, all the bosses are really fun to play, and I uh, really miss this option to replay for bosses. It was a cool feature in Ocarina of Time 3D and Skyward Sword, and uh, I yeah. think there's no. Good reason to leave this out, unless you want to make like download it with content. Right? Okay, we are selling a boss battle mode and <laughs> for five euro or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that's the plan, but yeah, that's one thing. Actually, I, I think DLC could work in this game if they did a boss battle mode and also uh, maybe online leaderboards for the mini games. Why would you pay for online leaderboards? Yeah, true, true. So maybe it should be. A free update or but uh, multiplayer with uh, if the street pass battles against the shadow links i think it would be so much more fun and awesome if you could play them online with alpha people mm. 
This would be great. Yeah. Because uh, the, AI, the, uh, the bots, the AI is good, but if you play them often enough, they get predictable and you know how to yeah. beat them. It gets boring. And But the fighting system is really great. Yeah, it works. So, so uh, I think an online multiplayer for the Shadow Battles would be really awesome. Imagine you play with other people from Zelda forms and yeah, it would be awesome. could be really popular. Could be really popular. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So let's hope it comes. Um, Martin, anything you missed you want to see? Well, there is the part about the dungeons that since we had the non-linearity, they had to think that okay, maybe you go to the desert temple first, or you go to the ice. So basically, the dungeons were just focused on one item. Yeah, and. I think that's really sad because I don't mind uh, they do this, but in the, later in the game they could have added some dungeons that was maybe linear, yeah, and I you had to do with more items. It was mm -hmm. a bit more tough with the uh, mazes be or the puzzles because I think uh, the puzzles was really easy. As I said, I didn't have any problems. Um, don't know if it's just just me or you guys. No, but there was some really good puzzles in the game, like oh. in the dark pillows with a with a master or. I think this was a really cool puzzle. Ah, yeah. Well, and in general, I think the puzzles were very creative. Like, we had the beamers, and he was activating... Yeah. I, I really liked the puzzles in this game. Yeah, they were original. Yeah. yeah. But I do agree that the non-linearity also has some uh, downsides to it. Yeah. Well, definitely yeah. the difficulty in the dungeons. It doesn't have anything to do with the non-linearity. The problem was that you don't have any item combinations, and I agree with it. Like there was some mini dungeons where you have to uh, use um, multiple items like a sand rod and the tornado rod and, and, yeah, and Muffin was, was cool. like hookshot and boomerang. I really enjoyed those and I would have liked to see them more in this direction like have a dungeon, a complete dungeon that uses two items maybe instead yeah. of just only one, yeah. yeah. Did any of you guys um, experience where you, you stood on a ledge and you looked to another ledge and you were thinking how, how did, do I get there? And you were taking out your tornado rod, you're doing everything just to try and get there. Until you've been standing there for five minutes and just, oh, duh, you have yeah. to mess with the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think in the dark world, there's like, above the dark palace, there's like the dark this, world. This, this, Yeah, I mean, lower world, yeah, you, knew, you know what I mean. <laughs> I there's like, above, above the dark palace, there's this, 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 this huge chasm, and you can yeah. actually uh, walk around it as a painting. But I yeah. think the ability is really great. And yeah, yeah, it's also really, really good made into the game. It's nice. It's nice yeah. implemented. It uh, it feels really good. I think everyone was afraid it was going to be a gimmick. Yeah. But it's really... Uh, because it usually so is, like, with train and cellar, or, you know, turning into a wolf. Yeah. But this time, yeah. uh, it really adds to the uh, top-down Zelda gameplay. It yeah. really yeah. adds new it levels works. to the whole thing, yeah. And I, I would like to see another game of it, maybe even extended by having Donald using sword and shield as a painting or something like that. Why yeah. are we talking about dungeons, guy? Oh, sorry, did we have a good point here? Well, I was thinking um, about a possible sequel, because I think yep. they have a pretty good game engine, and they could easily make a second game that uses it. I've seen a lot of people saying this, so I concur, and I think they should do it. But should they also uh, have the wall mechanic return? Yeah. <laughs> Well, Gameplay-wise, I'd say yes, but story-wise, uh, it would be weird. Well, you're the only one caring about story. So <laughs> true, true. I'd say yay. <laughs> Anyways, um, while we were talking about dungeons, mm -hmm. what about items as reward? Did you miss this? Like Ocarina of Time, you go, you, you get... You still have them. You still have uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, but items, it's yeah, not like. the same. Not the same. Well, we have the Titan Smith. It's that is the same. Yeah. 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 But I still miss that where you go, you see the big chest and think, oh, I'm going to get the bow now. No, damn, it's the, it's the I don't know, slingshot or something. Yeah, Are you really disappointed? <laughs> I agree, I did miss that. But, again, I'd actually rather uh, the way this game does it, so... I Should... hope in the future they can come up with a combination of the two. Yeah. Where there are just multiple maybe ways of... Beginning yeah. items from renting, buying, whatever. I think the renting system is a one-time thing, and it's it's really not uh, the, the uh, cause of the non-linearity. You can have a non-linear Zelda game with items and dungeons. I think in the original Zelda, uh, 
you could go for a lot of dungeon orders, but yep. not everyone, because nope. for some dungeons you just had to have this item. Yeah. Yep. I think that's a good. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's a really action. good way as well, stuff. Yeah. And maybe something they could have done just for the dark world, like they did this time, but without the renting. Yeah. Maybe something like that. So, if we think about future games, what of this game do you want to return? Upgrading system from the Mi yeah. ones. Oh, yeah. It's just awesome. You you come. I I remember buying the fire rod, and I was like, wow, what is this crap? It looks it looks horrendous. And I get my first ten Myomis, and it's the only item I own. So oh, whatever. I'm just gonna uh, upgrade this one. And wow, the best item ever. <laughs> yeah, it is. So lucky. Just sprout a big fire, kill everything in your path. I also like the item gouge. Yep. Yeah. Energy meter. Yeah. yeah, it's great, and it should, like in Skyward Sword, with the shield having a meter. You remember it yeah. breaks when you block yeah. it. I actually like that uh, gimmick as well. Yeah, because it forced you to not rely too much on the shield. and that Like, not enough thing. time. Yeah. L R, and I'm gonna run through everything. <laughs> But I yeah, actually was very surprised in Ocarina of Time when I found out that you could actually block the attack of Ganon, like the huge trident slash, whoosh, oh. oh, you just hold up your shield and you're okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Shield is overpowered in the 3D games. Frank? Um, oh, sorry. Mm. Martin? <laughs> no, go Frank. Uh, you always say the most important things, which is... Uh, I think... No, uh, hand no hand holding. Yeah, no hand holding. A good point. I really enjoyed what we did this in this game with the hint goes. If you need mm. some uh, hints, you can just look at use this item, and it doesn't get you. Don't have a, a stupid side kit that tells you everything. <laughs> Could have used a hint for getting them because I had to Google how to get my last item, which was the hint glasses. <laughs> so, <laughs> really? But you yeah. just have to talk to one well, guy. There's a hint in the game because uh, Irene, the witch, tells you actually I to go to the fortune teller and. I didn't do that. I thought that was ridiculous. Yeah, but okay. she says she, she, the, the fortune teller has an item for you. Uh, so well, completely he, skipped. Completely yeah. skipped. And okay. I got it after I beat the game. Yeah, well, I only used the glasses when I was curious about them. And I, I never needed a hint, so... I really hope that it's not on my save file, because I like it more without the hint glasses. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have to use them, so... Oh, I know. <laughs> Actually, what I'm hoping for this next Zelda is that they... Maybe will have a sidekick, like a companion, but... He or she is purely optional. Because now the hints are optional, but they're yeah. just random ghosts giving you the hints. And I think... Uh, it is a nice way to add some story and character development to your game. It but could it, be. It shouldn't be in your face like Fai and, and maybe Navi. No. But they'll have to balance it, I guess. Well, I think this game worked out well without a companion. Yeah. Yeah. Wh what did you think of the bosses? I haven't talked about the bosses yet. <laughs> no. Whoa. Not really. <laughs> Anyways. Um, they're great, and I like that they have faces again. Like in A Link to the Past, as I played last time, I think that's my favorite game for bosses, and this game is mm -hmm. just as good with the boss, even though they are quite easy. Yeah. I think I don't even think Hero Mode will change that, because I looked at my hearts every time I finished them, and it shouldn't be a problem. I agree. But they are great. They're, they're it's good, it's in the right direction. It's in the right direction, at least. Yeah. I was hoping they'd be a bit more difficult because sometimes I would kill them right after they went into their third phase and I thought, oh wait, that's it already? Yeah. I, I bet you had the same problem, uh, Frank, as a Zelda veteran, like the bosses were too easy for you? Uh, yeah, um, it's, I think it's normal. I already said that I've found enemies in this game not too easy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I like I played the Ice Runes as one of my first dungeons and the uh, Dark Star boss really kicked my ass, so <laughs> I was at least happy with this. And I think the final boss was pretty good as well. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I was totally expecting uh, someone else to turn into a villain that you would fight, without <laughs> spoiling it too much. Uh, but I was a bit disappointed that it was just like the the final boss. That's actually, it. I wasn't because I think we did a great job with. Yuga, that he doesn't turn out to be just another henchman of Ganon. Yeah. 
I think it was a great villain, also with his ability. I also him. think that Yuga suddenly actually got pretty cool in the end. Yeah. In the beginning she was pretty creepy. She or she he, is. it's not really clear. <laughs> well, I'm gonna call it a she, it's not a he. But what I, what I, I think, think was good with his ability to turn people into painting, we really kept this low profile with the whole painting thing. Like Tess of a guy who turns people into paintings, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I think this was cool, uh, it was sufficient. And yeah, it's great. Yeah, the I overall agree. story, I think Lauru has actual potential to be a, to return in the future Zelda game. I really think this is a great setting with uh, Princess Hilda and yeah. Legend Zelda. of Hilda. Yeah. Hmm. No, maybe but not. I, but yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I but did yeah. like Lauru, but I think it wasn't too fleshed out. Like uh, yeah, there's more pot there's lots of p potential here. Yeah, but maybe if we use it in a in a sequel, like for yeah. example, there's Alpha Triforce. We never said what Alpha Triforce stands for. We only mentioned that the Triforce from Hyrule that has different virtues than the one in Lowrule. Oh, so it might not actually be Courage Power and No, no, it's wow, not. Nice. It's definitely not. Hmm, that's interesting. But still, they could have done a bit more with that. For example, in uh, Majora's Mask, you have so much more details. Yeah. And things to talk about here it's, it's like actually hoping for a, a, a sequel for this game because there's lots of potential here and there <laughs> is mm. yeah. talking about sequels and storylines etc um frank your theory is that there's actually another link and, and zelda in between a link to the past and this one because the story doesn't really make sense uh, right? yeah it's the only way to explain the story in the timeline in my eyes because the backstory of Olympia Between Worlds doesn't really fit into the current timeline. Yeah. The backstory has like the Triforce splitting up into three three pieces. But in the end of A Link to the Past you have uh, the Triforce being re reunited and Ganon killed, defeated. Yeah. And there never have been seven sages, only six sages and Zelda was the seventh sage. In this game it's seven sages plus Zelda. So yeah. there must have must be like a different chapter where part of the backstory of Olympia between what happens. But I think the sad yeah. truth is that Nintendo just doesn't care about the story that much. Maybe that's a good reason for a new game. Maybe Zelda U will explain that, or maybe a new handheld will Probably explain not, what no, happened. Don't, don't Probably not, this. but let's see what happens. Yeah. Anyway, it comes down to is this game, is it living up to your expectations and would you rather play A Link to the Past or A Link Between Worlds? Which, which, which would you choose? Um, I would r rather replay this game, but I still think A Link to the Past is a better game, especially if you consider the time it was released in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a difficult question. Like, as Stefan said, Link to the Past is old, but in general a better game, I think. But I enjoy A Link Between Worlds a lot more. It's so fleshed out and... Mm. I really enjoy what we didn't mention so far, the so 3D and, and 60 FPS, oh, the way yeah. the game looks is so beautiful, so gorgeous. it plays so smooth, everything in this game is so smooth. The link it's, is so fast. I yeah. was playing Oracle of Seasons for one minute and it yep. just drove me crazy how slow Link is. It's really enjoyable to play, so yeah. I, I guess I would pick A Link Between Worlds as of now, definitely. It's it's. Part of my top five seller, I think for me it's the best seller game since the Nintendo 64, since Majora's Mask. Mm. Yeah, great Zelda game, really like it as well. Well, I'm having fun every second I'm playing it, and I'm still playing it every now and then. How, many, how much time did you need for the first playthrough, by the way? 16 something hours, probably close to 17. Wow, racing through it again. <laughs> yeah. I took my time about 20 hours, uh, but I spent a lot of time running around. Uh, you can tell that I didn't have the Pegasus boost because I used 24 and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was just Actually, running don't around use a lot. An, don't use them too much. I, I walk yeah. around a lot. Great game. Good game. I hope they take a lot of things from this game and put into the yeah. next Zelda games. Yeah. For me, the most important thing in Zelda is exploration. And this game is really a lot more about exploration with a non-linearity and really want them to keep this. In the, new, in the upcoming Zelda games. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I actually about exploration now that you mention it. Um, between the dungeons and low rule, at least it feels like you're just running from dungeon to dungeon really fast. I mean, it's the same in the Link to the Past. It's exactly the same. Yeah, I know so. it's the same, but that's an old game, and 
I understand yeah. they didn't have as much uh, content, but uh, this game could have had been more between the dungeons. I heard some people say that this game takes uh, three or four steps forward and one step back. I think yeah. that's a good way to describe it. Yeah. I also think they were trying to reset the game to the standard of 20 years ago with A Link to the Past. Probably. And I, I hope they'll continue to develop the series from this game and not yeah. keep yeah. I it agree. like this. I agree. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. We'll still be uh, enjoying the game, at least I will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. Probably one of the games you play from time to time when you go on vacation because it's easy to plug in and yep. it's easy to just play. Yeah. And there's the Treasure's tr Tower, which is really fun as well. I agree. I so, Frank, what's your favorite ammo? I bet it's not a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, and with that, I think we should end the podcast and say thanks for listening and give us feedback in the yeah. comments. See you next time. Yeah, see you next time, guys. <laughs>